Welcome to Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. The Red Hill Brothers, Part 4 Head Games. Hey guys, Zach here. I know it's supposed to make my editorial debut last time around, but <laughs> stuff comes up. I may seem like a cave-free buffoon. Man, man, do the responsibilities just keep piling up. I mean, really, this school isn't going to train itself. And without my midnight poker games down by the creek, how in the world could we ever keep up with our teenage mutant ninja habits? Speaking of the midnight poker games, you probably have zero clue as to what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd say about a month ago I was investigating an old rumor about some wild mushrooms that grow a few miles from the property. After hours of searching, I finally found what I was looking for. These things look like the most patriotic little micondits you've ever seen. I was feeling optimistic as ever, so I popped a few. <laughs> Down the hat, I said out loud, verbally reinforcing my stomach. It's the taste I never quite got used to. I don't remember much after that. Looking back, my best guess is I had beaked right around midnight. The first thing I can remember is stumbling through the woods, following the sound of rushing water. Find the brook, find the house, I thought. <laughs> As I got closer, I began hearing something. Uh, music? Voices? The warm glow of a fire? I was about to bust in on some high schoolers trying to get lucky. I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I took a moment to compose myself and then... Ch -ch -ch -ch. K -k 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 -k. Uh, I waited. Nothing. A little louder. With some gusto. I bust forth from the trees, arms raised. Before me stood seven stunned women of varying ages all dressed in the same violet robes. What in the mother's name? One of them screamed. And just what are you up to? Another one croaked. I, uh, um, I was a bit stunned myself. I thought they were going to be teenagers straight out of an 80s horror flick. <laughs> I, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I was a bit stunned myself. I thought for sure they were going to be teenagers straight out of an 80s horror flick. Uh, I'm Zach, and I'm real. Real sorry for uh, barging in on your, um, whatever it is you're doing out here. It's quite all right, young man. The soft voice came from an elderly woman with a bright white hair. My name is Eileen, and these are my sisters. I took a second and surveyed the area. A table, some candles, different trinkets and coins, and a stack of cards. Sisters? Took me a minute, but I figured it out. Oh, you guys must be some sort of sorority doing a poker game, huh? That's exactly what's going on here. A raspy voice came from the back. The figure had emerged and was an old and leathery woman. Her teeth were yellowed if they were there at all. She looked to be Eileen's elder by at least twenty years. Oh, mind if I join in? What's the buy-in? I pulled out my wallet. Now, now, Melinda, Eileen spoke up. We mustn't keep this young man up. Melinda peered over at the wallet in my hand obviously trying to gauge if I was a high enough roller. She leaned in and whispered something into Eileen's ear. Her eyes widened for a moment, then returned to their calm, neutral gaze. Well, one game couldn't hurt, right? The rest is history. I've been coming 
every Friday night since, and man, have I been on one hell of a hot streak. Just last week, I cleaned the table out for dang near everything but their panties. The last hand was between myself and the far from her prime, Melinda. I kept my calm with my pocket aces and casually said I was getting late. After some irrelevant small talk, I gathered good old Mindy and some then worth taking about, so I went all in. Her right eye twitched over so slightly as she reached into her handbag and pulled out an old book. I may be a little lacking in chips, baby, but I've got something here worth more than that whole pot. What you got, Mindy? I asked. This here is an original copy of a game book from one of those old tabletop games. You know, Dungeons of Darkness or whatever. Melinda, what has gotten into you? Eileen interjected. You mean Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I used to love to play that game back in the day. Lay him down, let's see it. She glared at Eileen as she confidently dropped her cards face up. Pocket Jack with the threes on the river. Her smile quickly disappeared once her eyes met my aces. <laughs> she reluctantly handed the book over. As I went to take it, her grip tightened. With the most serious look I had ever seen on this drunken toadstool, she said quietly, Be careful with this. Maybe just put it on display. Keep it tucked away, yeah? <laughs> Ma'am, I can assure you I will absolutely under no circumstances use the book. She just shrugged and waved me off with a smile. After a few moments of awkward silence, she relinquished the tomb. I scooped up my winnings, thanked the girls, and hurried my house home. There was a strange look on Eileen's face as I was leaving. Concern, maybe? Either way, it was getting late. A little way back to the road, I felt the hair on my neck stand up. I couldn't tell what it was, but I felt like I was being watched. Slowly made my way through, hearing snaps of branches and rustles of old dead leaves. Once again, I stopped to try and pinpoint where it was coming from when I heard it. A great rasping cry came from the distance, closing in fast. I turned around and just in time to see wild eyes shining in the moonlight. A pink feather boa floating in the air and a large black codpiece floating back and forth. It was him. Until now, I just assumed that was Matt's problem, but he was on me before I could react, and he raked at my neck with long, dirty nails. Scratches gouged my skin. Nothing serious, at least not as serious as the stud that just ripped out of my ear. Get out of here, you smelly thing, I yelled it, as I threw him off a good distance. He rolled backwards to his feet, staring at his prize like it was made of gold, and made his way up to the closest tree. With that, he just, just disappeared. Shaking my head, I mounted the Zack Wheeler and started her up. Probably the best investment I've made with my winnings. Makes coming and going a whole lot easier. Still haven't told Matt about it. A man needs his secrets, after all. The second verse of Crawling blared through the speakers was suddenly cut off. I'd been back home long enough at this point to know that what that meant. I sparked up my road joint and listened. Good morning, listeners. The time is now 4.30 a.m., and the summer heat is already making itself known. It's going to be a hazy Saturday with temperatures creeping into the triple digits. We recommend staying hydrated, staying home, and under no circumstances should you enter the clock tower.
A brief stint of static bridged the gap between the broadcast and the ending chords of Lincoln Park. I wasn't sure what the clock tower thing was about, but the thought of getting Maddie and Serena in on a game of D&D had my head spinning. Or maybe it was the dube that I held onto from our last encounter with Melvin and Sheena. <laughs> Before I knew it, I was about a mile away from the house. I shut the ATV off and walked into the bushes where I kept it hidden. A few minutes later, I was back on our front porch. I slowly eased the door open. Fully aware I'm a grown-ass man, I just felt waking Matt and having him go off on me was something I could do without. Especially if I was going to try and convince him to join the campaign tomorrow. No sooner had the door clicked back into place, a light came on. Sitting in the chair by the switch was none other than Uncle Bob. Jeez, Bob, you scared me half to death. He let out a chuckle. And just what are you doing out so late, boy? You know well as me, nothing good happens past two. Oh, just making an honest living, Uncle Bob. It's been a long night, though. I'll see you in the morning. You and I both know that's fiddle on a broomstick. But, your secret's safe with me. Have a good one. And you be sure to tell Mel and the gals I said hey, he said with a wink. I flashed a smirk, then made my way to the room in the back of the living room. Future reference, that's just my room from now on. I woke up like a kid on Christmas. Maddie, Maddie, you'll never guess what I got. I yelled as I came barreling towards the kitchen game, book in hand. If it's another rash, please spare me the details. What? No, no, nothing like that. Look, I got scored off of some old lady last night. What do you mean, some old lady? Have you been visiting the nursing home again? Oh, yeah, that's right. So I found a group of gals that get together every Friday by the swamp for a poker game. They really get right into it. Whole places lit up with these uh, neat candles. There's even a giant table we all sit around and play. They all do this strange little chant to try and boost their luck beforehand. Huh, <laughs> hasn't been working too well if you ask me, though. Something seems off about that. But I'm not deep enough into my coffer to care yet, anyway. <laughs> right, anyway... I cleaned them out last night, but Mindy didn't have the cash, so instead she put up this first edition copy of a Dungeons and Dragons adventure book. I was thinking about how much we like to play as kids, and I hoped you'd be down for a game. I think you mean how much you liked playing when we were kids. Oh, I bet Serena will like to play. I could tell those were the magic words. Serena was the one who introduced it when we were younger. I genuinely enjoyed the games, but I could always tell Maddie only played to spend time with her. I saw his wall begin to crumble. Yeah, I guess it'll be fun, but only if she's in. Of course, bro, it'll be a blast. We arrived at Serena's around noon. She was just as excited as I was to get the game going. We chatted for a bit while eating some lunch. Chicken tenders and french fries are always a good idea. Before leaving, I grabbed a couple off the pan and shoved them into my shirt pocket. It never hurts to be prepared, you know. We got back and noticed the door was open. What the hell, Zach? You trying to invite the whole damn ecosystem into our house? I, I know I closed it, man. It's got to be those damn gnomes. Enough. With the gnomes. Gnomes? Serena asked with real curiosity. Yeah, these little guys that... Matt cut me off. Don't get him started. I walked in and stopped. The sound of crunching could be heard. We followed him into the living room where Melvin and Sheena were sitting on the couch, enjoying a bag of cooler ranch. A third figure was sitting in the chair. Like, hi, gang. This here's Johnny. He's been hanging out, sharing his 
spiritual energies with us, said Sheena. I had completely forgotten I told them to show up for a smoke session. I could see in Matt's face he was getting annoyed, so I acted quickly. Well, the more the merrier. We can all play. After a couple of joints and some discussions on our characters, we were ready to play. This particular adventure came with pre-rolled characters. I chose the barbarian. Matt would play a paladin, while Serena chose the rogue. Melvin and Serena chose the druid and the bard. And the newcomer, Johnny, decided on the fighter. All right, folks, let's get this game rolling. I laughed out loud at my own joke. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> I let a 20-sided dice fall to the table. A loud crack erupted from the board, and for an instant it felt like I was being sucked into the world's largest vacuum. Flesh is a light, and moments of darkness filled my vision until I felt on a warm glow on my eyelids. I slowly opened my eyes. The sun was bright. I could feel the grass on my back. Where the hell did my shirt go? I rose up from the ground and began taking in the surroundings. Next to me, in the same state of shock, were Matt, Serena, uh, Melvin, Sheena, and Johnny. But they were uh, uh, different. Matt was covered in golden armor with a giant sword at his side. The medallion he inherited hung from his neck and shimmered. Uh, Serena was clad in light leather and carried a bow on her back and a small dagger on her belt. Oh. My. God. Guys, don't freak out, but... I, I think we got closed and ended up in Rencon. That is the dumbest thing, Matt started to say before trailing off. He felt the armor he wore and began summing the medallion. What in the hell... Is that a friend of yours? Johnny asked as he pointed away from the circle. We all looked in the direction. A large creature was headed straight for us, dragging what looked like a tree trunk behind it. Holy hell, is that a troll? I blurted out in disbelief. Serena replied, How could it be a troll? What in the world is going on here? We can worry about that after we deal with Matt's prom date. Aim for his eyes, Serena. Once he's blinded, we can flank him and take him down. Aim for his eyes? How the hell am I supposed to do that? He's a good 50 feet away. Don't worry about that. You've got a 100 foot range with that thing before you start suffering penalties. She gawked at me for a moment. Trust me, just draw your bow, aim, and shoot. <sighs> Here goes nothing, she said hesitantly. She drew back and released the arrow. In an instant, the troll screamed out and began nursing his eye. Direct it! Rush him! I brandished my axe and began charging the monster before he was even aware of me. Was on him. One clean swipe, and his head rolled away from his lifeless body. Dun, 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 dun. What the hell was that? Victory tune, you know? When you beat the bad guys, the music starts. Not that. I mean that, as he pointed to the headless troll, blood still sputtering from the neck. Oh, well, that's a troll, and he cut me off again. How is there a troll here, Zack? And why are we all cosplaying as Game of Thrones characters? Serena chimed in. I'm no expert here, but I think we got sucked into the game, guys. Silence filled the air for a moment, with only the breeze to fill it. I nodded. Yeah, that checks out. Great, great. So how do we get back? I'm guessing we need to finish our quest. Not really sure, but it's probably our best option. But what's the quest? Matt asked. That big brother, we won't know until we know. Oh, 
Thanks for those riveting words of wisdom. Anytime. <laughs> we should head to that uh, nearest town and find a tavern. That's where all the quests are passed out. Matt opened his mouth to say something, then paused. Eventually finished his thoughts. You know what? Fine. Let's do that, sure. It didn't take long for us to stumble through a gate with a sign that read East Borough. In no time at all, we came upon a small tavern named the Vagrant Broom and approached the barkeep. Five ales, please. I pulled out a small coin bag and dropped it on the counter. And some information, if you can spare it, nodding to the bag. I... You lot be like the hardened adventures type this town be needin' right now. A demon has taken hold of our town and cursed our land. Time has stood still for longer than anyone can tell. Please help our people. I glanced over at Matt. The look on my face said, Told you so. The look on his face says, I don't want to hear it. There's the goal. Slay the demon and return the town back to normal. <laughs> Easy peasy. All right. Where can we find this demon? The barkeep's hands motioned something large. He claimed the tallest building in town as his castle. Matt smirked. Should be easy enough to find. Agreed, Serena said hastily. And we need to get a move on. My shift starts at five. We marched out. It didn't take long to find it. A giant clock tower right in the middle of town. Maddie and Serena started talking amongst themselves. I heard words like sneak and stealth, but was too busy formulating my own plan. I moved past them both and with a well-placed kick, booted the front doors open. Hello! I screamed into the empty hall. Or that, Matt said, shaking his head. Leroy Jenkins. A deep, echoing voice responded. Well then, it's about time you showed up. <laughs> Serena scoffed. Did he just waste his initiative to use a pun. What kind of demon is this? I don't know, but I'm gonna clock him good. <laughs> that one hurt. I was coming up with a strategy. All right, guys, we need Sheena to distract him with some area spells. Melvin can boost mine and Johnny's strength while Serena sneaks up on him for the kill shot. Matt, Stay on standby in case we need you to turn him. Turn him? What do you mean by turn him? Well, you know, rebuke him with your holy symbol. My what? Holy symbol. You know, the medallion. You just hold it out in front of you and, you know, turn him. On three, one, two. Ah! Johnny bellowed. As he charged forward, spear at the ready. It was over before it begun. The demon reached out with its clawed hands and grabbed hold of Johnny's head. Without a hint of effort, he twisted and spun his head around. So Johnny's lifeless eyes stared over at us. The demon laughed as he dropped the corpse to the ground. It will take more than sharpened sticks to defeat me. Well, damn. Take note, guys. Let's not do that. Pretty sure he's at a negative points right now. Probably not a good place to be. Remember the plan. Matt, you're on combat with me now. We can't get careless or we'll end up like Jimmy. Johnny, Sheena corrected me. Yeah, Ronnie, right. On my mark, we strike. Now! Melvin began chanting. I could feel my muscles growing stronger. The energy coursed through my blood was unreal. I shot a glance at Matt and could tell he was experiencing the same thing. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Serena creep into the shadows and disappear. Sheena muttering an incantation. 
and with a wave of her hand, a massive fireball exploded right in front of the demon. Matt and I charged, sword and axe raised. It all rested on Serena's stealth. She leapt from somewhere up high. God knows how she got up there and plunged two daggers deep into the demon's back. The embers from the fireball had barely cleared the demon's vision when we reached him, thinking we'd been successful. And this was the end. I bellowed out. Time's up for you! My brother and I swung our weapons hard, but our attack was interrupted. The demon had reached back and grabbed hold of Serena. He launched her at us, sending the three of us sprawling back. What gives? asked Matt, as he rose to his feet and extended a hand to Serena. Of course, I shouted. He must have undead traits, meaning he's immune to sneak attack damage. Dang! Behind me, I could hear Melvin and Sheena giggling. They clearly had no idea what was going on. What I wouldn't give for that bliss! All right, new plan. Let's try out some special abilities. I'm going to try and contact an ancestral spirit and get some guidance on what to do. It's going to take some time, though. How the hell are we going to buy you the time you need? It's all up to you, Maddie. You've got to hold him off. Trust in your powers. Trust in your symbol. You can do it. Thanks for the pep talk, pal. I'm not your pal, guys. I'm not your guy, buddy. I'm not your bud. Enough! Shouted Serena. Let's end this. Matt and I nodded. I sat down and closed my eyes, calming my mind and seeking out my ancestor's wisdom. As everything went quiet, I heard Matt's voice fading. It sounded like he was reciting something familiar, or he was rattling off a recipe for cookies. <laughs> Either way, soon there was nothing, just darkness, until suddenly, I, about time you came around looking for some help. Uncle Bob, man, am I ever glad to see you. What happened here? Well, shortly after y'all sat down for your game there, the five of you just slumped over. Sometime later, out of the blue, one of your friend's heads spun completely round. I didn't know what to make out of that. Right after that, some toothless old hag showed up and started snooping around, chanting all kinds of nonsense. Huh? Toothless hag? Almost sounds like Mindy. Ha, I get it now. She's a witch. Oh, I bet she's the one that's been stealing our brooms. <laughs> right, all right, Bob. When you get back, you gotta, uh, unlock the trap door. You really want me to free that monster? You know what could happen to you, don't you? Oh, trust me, Bob, I've made huge progress with Captain Bubbles lately. All right, then, Zachary. I'll do it. Just hope it don't end badly for you. I smiled and opened my eyes. Matt was standing in front of us all. Medallion in hand, screaming at the top of his lungs. And her husband, Eustace Bags. But creepy stuff happens in... Is he reciting old Cartoon Network intros? <laughs> he sure is, Serena answered, starry-eyed. Oh, whatever he's saying, it's working. A bright green light emanated from the medallion, and it appeared the demon was recoiling in actual pain. Just a little longer, Maddie, to save his new home. With a blinding flash of light, accompanied by a loud pop, and we were back. I slowly opened my eyes. A gnawing sound filled the air. I turned to see the ghoul hunched over Melinda. Large chunks of her face and chest had been ripped clean off. I jerked upright, out of instinct, and the ghoul heard me. It stopped mid-bite and stood up. In seconds, he closed the gap between us. His leathery hand shot out and grabbed my collar with ease. He lifted me up the chair and held me as if I were some child's plaything. <laughs> he began sniffing me up and down, 
and his free hand started towards my face. Damn, this is it, huh? Not quite how I imagined it, but you get what you get sometimes. His gnarled claws stopped short of my face, however, and diverted to my chest. Out of my shirt packet, the ghoul grabbed the chicken tenders I'd scored from Serena. He dropped me onto the floor with a loud thud and turned around. Grabbing Tommy's leg, Captain Bubbles retreated to the cellar, allowing the trap door to slam shut behind him. Melvin and Sheena were having a hard time understand what happened to Tommy. Johnny, Sheena corrected me again. So the three of us eventually found it easier to just lie and say we'd all taken a dose and there was never a fifth party member. Zarina composed herself and hurried off to work, but not before planting a big wet one on Matt's lips. <laughs> About time, if you ask me. She must have been mighty impressed by how he held that demon off. As she bolted out the door, she nearly ran headfirst into a white-haired old lady approaching the threshold. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. That's quite all right, young lady. It was Eileen, but what would she be doing here? I'm terribly sorry for all the trouble Melinda has caused. You see, she's been trying to manipulate the coven since we took her in two months ago. Once she snuck a peek at your ID that first night in the swamp, she began convincing us all that there was a powerful hidden magics in you boys, and it would be worth keeping an eye on you. I didn't realize she was just biding her time. I'm glad you're okay. A whole coven? I asked. So all of you were like witches, huh? <laughs> Pretty cool. I got a question for you then, Eileen. Go ahead, dear. Why do you witches steal brooms? Is it all of, all of you or just like the bad ones like Mindy? At this point, even Matt was on the edge of his seat. Clearly, he was every bit as curious as I was regarding our missing brooms. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, dear. Friday, buy-in moves us to 20. Don't be afraid to bring that brother of yours. She let loose a loud cackle and walked away, closing the door behind her. <laughs> Matt and I walked slowly over to the couch, Plopped down on either end, Matt's head lifted up. Oh, Zach, how about a quick recap? Let me know if I missed anything. You've been playing poker with a coven of witches, one of which tried to kill us by sending you home with a cursed game book until, through some miracle, the ghoul, Captain Bubbles, I interjected. Captain Bubbles, Matt continued, broke free from the cellar and ate the witch, freeing us from the curse. I stood up and moved to the fridge. I grabbed two beers and I went back to the couch. I popped the caps and handed one over. Yeah, bro. That about sums it up. So, quote, this raven. <laughs> Zach is a hoot. And sorry about the witch cackle. I can never resist doing a good witch cackle. <laughs> and I have so many wonderful stories on my subreddit. Oh, it's going to take forever to get through them. So I wish, I really wish I had the time to put out one every day. But if I have not read your story, hang in there. It doesn't mean I'm not going to. Anyway... I hope you all have a lovely, lovely Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you so kindly for stopping by my chateau, my darlings. It does mean so much to me. Please, if you have not subscribed, as many of you have not, please do so. Give me a like so I know what you would like to hear. And comment. I always love to read your comments. And special thanks to my Patreon and membership supporters. 
Ciao, darlings.